Outlander SUV is the world's best-selling plug-in hybrid, and for good reason. Much of its success is down to the fact that it was first in this segment of the market, but Mitsubishi has kept this car popular by continually improving it. That's certainly what the brand has done in creating the much-enhanced 2019 model year version of this car. It's a smarter, quieter and more appealing product. Quite a few changes have improved this 2019 model year Outlander PHEV model. For a start, the petrol engine that drives its plug-in hybrid drivetrain has increased in size from 2 litres to 2.4 litres. This power plant puts out 135 PS and, as before, is assisted by electric motors at the front and the rear, so creating this PHEV variant's own particular four-wheel drive setup. With this revised model, the motor at the front still puts out 82 PS, but the one at the rear is now 10% more powerful than before, developing 95 PS. The drive battery is bigger too. It's now got 15% more capacity and develops 10% more power, having been increased in size to 13.8 kWh. The extra cells do take slightly longer to charge though. Think now in terms of needing four hours from a normal household socket. When fully replenished, a WLTP cycle certified figure of 28 miles of all electric progress is theoretically possible. So the technology has been upgraded, but then there wasn't really very much wrong with that to begin with. In improving this car, Mitsubishi was very aware that the driving experience on offer here also needed to be enhanced if this Outlander was to be more effective in generating conquest sales from more conventional rivals. Hence this improved model's recalibrated suspension and a body shell that, thanks to a new structural adhesive welding process, is now more rigid. Plus, there are bigger brakes, grippier tyres and improved levels of cabin refinement. There's also now a selectable sport mode which gives quicker throttle response, uh, sharper feel through the now quicker reacting steering rack and more grip via the super all-wheel control system that includes a selectable snow mode to improve low grip launches and cornering traction on slippery tarmac. It's all welcome, but what really sells this car is its efficiency stats, which are WLTP cycle rated at 139 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 46 grams per kilometre of CO2. True, uh, you'd have some trouble ever achieving these figures in the real world, but what matters is that the government believes them, which is why this car attracts a benefit-in-kind taxation rating of just 13% enough to save some company users a fortune. You can maximise the returns possible by making full use of the three so-called intelligent motion driving mode settings that this Outlander PHEV offers. The first of these, EV Priority Mode, is one in which there's no engine input and the front and rear electric motors move the car using only stored electricity from the drive battery. In this setting, you can theoretically travel at up to an all-electric 84 mile an hour top speed. Push on a little and your Outlander PHEV will switch into its second series hybrid mode, where the engine generates extra power for the electric motors. Beyond that, there's a third parallel hybrid mode, which adds the resources of the petrol engine driving the front wheels for maximum performance. This isn't an SUV you'd buy to make a driveway statement, but in its own way, it's a smartly functional bit of automotive technology. The key updates apply here at the front, which gets a redesigned grille, this restyled bumper extension and smarter fog lamp bezels. Plusher models like this one uh, that feature full LED headlights get them with a more stylish so-called technical look finish. time to take a seat behind the wheel. Now Mitsubishi upgraded the cabin of this car quite a bit as part of changes made to this uh, model back in 2016 which hasn't left much scope for many further changes that could be made to this 2019 model year car without a complete cabin redesign. This improved model does get a restyled instrument cluster and the front seats have been recontoured to give more lateral cornering support. 
The brand has standardized its SDA smartphone link display audio system, which gives you a 7-inch high-definition center dashboard color infotainment screen framed in a gloss black panel above the climate control switch gear. From here, you access the usual navigation, DAB audio, media and Bluetooth phone features. Time to take a seat in the second row. There's reasonable space back here for two adults or three at a squash, with the third person's cause aided by the way that the central transmission tunnel has been kept usefully low. Just above, this model now gets twin vents, a surprising omission from previous versions. On this PHEV derivative, you can't slide this back bench uh, forward and backwards in the way that you can on the alternative petrol variant. That's because of the battery pack situated beneath the seat. Here in this five seat only PHEV version, there's 731 litres of space. That's only 50 litres less than you get in the ordinary petrol version with the luggage area chairs folded. If you need more space, then folding the second row backrest frees up 1.85 meters of floor length. If you were to load up to the headlining, you'd have up to 1,472 liters of space in this PHEV variant. That's pretty close to the 1,608 liter total that you'd get from the conventional petrol model. There really ought to be more competition for this car by now. As it is, most of this Outlander PHEV model's rivals still campaign primarily with smoky diesel power, which will be no good to you if you're seriously troubled by questions of company car taxation and forthcoming emissions legislation. Rival premium brands have this technology, but they struggle to bring it to market for the kind of money that Mitsubishi is asking here. Of course, since the abolition of the government's plug-in car grant, this Outlander PHEV no longer looks quite as affordable as it once did. But it still makes sense against a premium badge D-segment SUV rival. If you've never thought much of electric mobility as an automotive solution, we think you might still have the power to convert you.